Welcome to Geometry, Lesson 11.2, and today we're talking about proving similar triangles. So this should feel familiar. Um, we've worked with proving congruent triangles before, so this has a lot in common with that. Remember CPCTC that we learned, and we use that in proofs instead of using the definition of congruent triangles, we can just cite CPCTC as our reason for this. So in similar triangles, we can do the same thing, except it's a little bit different. So we have corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. And corresponding sides of similar triangles have proportional lengths. So look at this example here. If we have corresponding angles of similar triangles, so if B is congruent to Y, and A is congruent to X, and C is congruent to Z, we know that these triangles are similar. So we can cite CASTC, corresponding angles of similar triangles are congruent. And the same thing with similar triangles, they need to have proportional lengths. So remember from lesson 11.1, .1, if AB is proportional to XY, BC is proportional to YZ, and AC is proportional to XZ, these are congruent or similar triangles. And so we can cite CSSTP, corresponding sides of similar triangles are proportional, not congruent. If I have a triangle that has two congruent angles, the third one has to be congruent as well. So if I have two angles of one triangle that are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So it's possible that they would also be congruent if the side lengths were exactly the same. But we don't know, we'd have to know more about the sides of those to be able to say that they're congruent, but we can say that they are at least similar. So let's use the angle-angle similarity postulate to prove that each pair of these triangles are similar. Can we do that? So it looks like we have parallel lines here. So GH is parallel to DE. Because we have parallel lines here, we can, we can tell that D, angle D and angle H are congruent and angle E and angle G are congruent. Why can we tell that? Because these are interior angles cut by the transversal of these two parallel lines. Yes, so since D, angle D is congruent to angle H and angle E is congruent to angle G, we can use angle-angle similarity postulate to prove that these pairs, that this pair of triangles are similar. And here's another example. So we have this triangle UV, UVX and triangle ZXY. So we have right a right triangle here, which means that this is going to be a right triangle and this is going to be a right triangle. So we have um, at least one angle that is congruent. However, we don't have a second pair of angles that are congruent. So we can't use angle-angle similarity postulate to prove that these angles are congruent. And the final example on 1C, can angle-angle similarity postulate be used to prove that each pair of triangles are similar, a right triangle with a 35 degree angle and a second right triangle with a 55 degree angle? 
So we know that we have a 90 degree and a 90 degree. So we have one pair of congruent angles. And then we have a 35 and a 55. But we know that in a right triangle, we have 180 degrees. So we subtract the 90 off of that and we have 90 degrees left. So we can subtract 35 from 90. And that gives us 55. So that means we have congruent angles. So since the third angle and the first triangle has to be 55 degrees, the angle-angle similarity postulate can be used to prove this. Our second theorem for the day is called the side-side-side similarity theorem, which should sound very similar to the side-side-side congruence. So if three sides of one triangle are proportional to the corresponding three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are similar. So Notice the difference here between triangles that are congruent and triangles that are, per, uh, that are similar. In triangles that are similar, we just need the sides, the three sides to be proportional. So remember in lesson 11.1, .1, where we found the proportion or the scale difference of similar triangles, that's what we're doing here. So if we have three sides that are proportional, then the two triangles are similar. Because if you have proportional sides, then the angles are still going to be um, this are going to be congruent. And our final theorem for the day is side angle side similarity theorem. If two sides of one triangle are proportional to the corresponding two sides of another triangle, and the included angles are congruent then the two triangles are similar. Notice that it has to be the included angle. So if you have two sides, if this side is similar or proportional to this side, and this side is proportional to this side of a triangle, then the included angle, this angle right here, needs to be congruent to the other one. It cannot be either of these angles. It needs to be the included angle. Okay, let's run through some examples. Can the triangles be proved similar with the given information? So we have um, side lengths of 15 and 12 and 9 and 12, 16, and 20. So if we find the corresponding sides here. So this is our hypotenuse. So we would take 15 over 20. That gives us 0.75. If we take 9 over 12, that's also 0.75. And 12 divided by 16, also 0.75. So yes. The lengths of all three corresponding sides are proportional, and so therefore we can say that triangle XYZ is similar to triangle QRP, and we can prove that by the side-side-side similarity postulate. Okay, so here we have two side lengths and one pair of congruent angles. So um, it looks like maybe we could prove this by side angle side. So we could take 15 over 10, which gives us 1.5, and we could take 12 over 8, which also gives us 1.5. So we have proportional sides here, but we only have two, so we can't do it by side, side, side. And we can't do it by angle, angle, because we only know that this angle and this angle are congruent. So can we use side, angle, side? Well, in order for that to be true, angle K would have to be congruent to angle M, 
because that's the included angle. And we don't have a measurement for that, so we can't actually prove that these angles are similar. Now we have these two triangles. So we can take, um, we have two side lengths for each triangle. So we can see if those are proportional. So we want to take nine over the length of this whole side. So you see how the triangle is, the smaller triangle is placed on top of larger triangle. So this is triangle one and this, whoops, is triangle two. So we want to take nine over the length of this whole side, which is 15. So nine over 15 gives us 0. 0.6. And then if we take six over the length of this whole side, so six over 10, six plus four is 10, that gives us 0. 0.6 as well. So we have two proportional sides and U is congruent to itself. And so we have side, side, and the included angle. So we can prove that this is congruent, that these are similar triangles because of side, angle, side similarity postulate. Okay, so if you'd like to see a bit of a visual for this, on page 527, there's a little image showing a tree with a shadow and a man with a shadow. Mr. Ward is cutting down this tree and he wants to make sure that when he cuts the tree that it doesn't land on his house or the neighbor's house. And so he wants to know how tall the tree is. So he's using his shadow and the tree shadow to find a proportion that he can then use to figure out the height of the tree. So at the same time that the tree is casting a 45 foot shadow, uh, Mr. Ward is casting a four foot shadow. We don't know how tall the tree is, but we know that Mr. Ward is six feet tall. So we can set up an equation. We want to know the height of the tree. And so we are saying that the height of the tree is to the height of Mr. Ward as the length of the sh tree shadow is to the length of Mr. Ward's shadow. So remember this formula from 11.1. So now to solve this, we can multiply, we can cross multiply. Now the way that they solve this is by taking six, they take six over one to get rid of the six on this side and so they multiply 45 over four times six. The other way you can do this is the way you did in 11.1 and you can cross multiply. So you can take 4h equals 45 times six which is 270. And then you can divide both sides by four and get 67 and a half. Both ways you get 67 and a half feet. So this tree is 67 and a half feet tall. Oops, I told you earlier that was our last theorem. This is our last theorem. So our final theorem is that triangle similarity is an equivalence relation. Try not to overthink this one. Triangle similarity, two triangles that are similar, it's an equivalence relation. They are equivalent to each other. Just a quick recap on the ways that we can tell whether triangles are similar. We can use the angle angle similarity postulate where we have if two angles are congruent, so if angle A is congruent to angle X, and angle B congruent to angle Y, then these triangles are going to be similar. We can use the side, side, side similarity theorem. So if we have three sides that are proportional to three sides of another one, then we can say that these triangles are similar. And if we have two sides and their included angle um, are proportional and congruent respectively to another triangle, then we can say that these triangles, two triangles, are similar. Okay, so your assignment is listed on the sheet that I've given you, and 
um, a note on the proof that you're doing, you should be able to get the proof in three steps.